coins, fruit, gold, points. There are a lot of names for game currency or point systems within a level. Sometimes you can carry them over between levels and sometimes they're used to come up with a level score or give you some rewards. In Sonic, those are rings. Rings have been the in-level collectible item since the first Sonic the Hedgehog game in 1991. Uniquely in Sonic, they also serve as part of a health system where if you have even one ring, it protects the player from losing a life when they get damaged. On our journey to get Sonic Person up to par with his idol, adding collectible rings will be essential. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now the problem with collectibles in any game builder garage level is the node on count. Unlike other game dev programs where you can create tons of instances or prefabs of an item, in GBG each item in the game world takes up its own space to be shared with everything else in the game. This forces you to be as sparing as possible with node on use since you normally want to have a lot of these collectible items. So I'll show you three levels of node on involvement collectible items and how to make them leading up to our fully fleshed out sonic rings. First we need to set up a basic collectible system. We need a fancy object to be the base of our collectible. This way we can detect when it's broken and we can manipulate those specific item settings throughout the world. I'll use an apple since it just feels natural. The other basic component is being able to detect when the collectibles are, well, collected or obtained. This is really simple. We'll get an object break node on since it outputs one signal each time the given object is broken in the game world and we'll plug it into the count up input on a counter. Then we'll need to display it somehow. For now, we'll use a number object, we'll put it somewhere in the game world, and we'll send our counter signal into it. Now we're done with the super simple collectible. Each item in our game world takes up only one node on, which is definitely ideal. So try to stick to something like this if your node on count is really tight and you're trying to add collectibles to a level or a game that you made. Maybe there's a fancy object that wouldn't look out of place as a collectible item in your game, then you can use this kind of setup. The next level of abstraction would be to simply add a texture. You're gonna need to add a texture at least if you wanna differentiate a collectible item from any of the basic fancy objects. So I created this sonic ring and you can just attach it to your object. You can attach multiple objects to one texture. I think it's eight or nine per texture node on. Now we have each nine or eight items taking up one additional texture object. So it's really not too expensive depending on how many items you have in your world. The full build that we're gonna use for our ring is gonna be a bit more involved. Since the first game, rings have rotated. So that's what we're gonna recreate at a base minimum. That means we'll need a rotating object. We'll then connect it to our apple and add a texture, the ring from before. Now you'll need to play around with the settings and make sure that your apple is invisible, but it stays solid so that it could be broken by the player object. You'll also need to manipulate the player destructive setting so that it can destroy apples and have the apple so that it could be destructible by the person object. We'll make sure that all of our connection points are center center so no weird gravity rotation problems happen and you'll usually want to set these objects to zero gravity so that they stay in place like a regular collectible unless you wanted to apply gravity to them. We want to rotate on the Y axis so we'll just get a constant node on and plug it into the Y input on the rotating object. One is a little fast, so I brought it down to 0.5. And I think that looks pretty good for our ring. Now, if you don't have any other boxes breaking in your game, then you can skip the apple and reduce one node on per collectible by just using the rotating object. But I wanna leave things open for the ability for other blocks to be broken, like enemies, for example. But you can customize this to fit your game's needs since it is fairly node on expensive. Each individual collectible is two node on at base. They'll then have to share texture node on and you'll need to somehow get the constant node on signal into all of them. One way to do this with the constant node on, instead of having to place them along the game screen and create some spaghetti code, would be to use wormholes. You can have a 0.5 go into a wormhole entrance, and then the wormhole exit will always output a 0.5, so you can have a few wormhole exits throughout the game world to prevent having to place a bunch of constant node on. The benefit of the object break node on carrying so much of the weight here is that if you want to add any effects or sounds every single time an object is broken, all you have to do is use the output from the object break. Last thing we're going to do is throw this up into a quick little HUD element so we can keep track of our rings at all times. There are multiple ways to do this, including using slide connectors to find an X and Y position on the screen attached to an object on the first person node on, but we're going to instead use something a little simpler and less shaky. All we're going to do is connect a series of boxes of different dimensions and shapes so that we can then attach our number object to these boxes and put it somewhere on the screen that we want to see it. Setting 
setting up this sort of sequential system of boxes in the HUD can get a little tricky since we're kind of just like attaching Lego bricks to each other to get to the right place and it takes a lot of trial and error but I'm going to try to at least let you know the dimensions and the connection points. You can also use the game ID to get a copy of this and take a look for yourself. So for our first central box we want the connection point to be center center and we want to leave it so that it's only movable. I gave it a size of 1.6, 1.4, 4.8 and that's on the x y and z axes respectively so this is going to be our central box that's going to protrude forward from the camera since we want the boxes of the hud to be ahead of the camera so that they can actually be displayed by the viewing angle the second box is going to go upwards so we're going to have it at a connection point of y negative y positive and we're going to again set it so that it is only movable all the other settings stay essentially the same and the dimensions are 1.6 x 0.80 y and 4.8 on the Z axis. I left it as visible so you can kind of see it in the camera space and now we're going to attach a box to the left of that so that we can get closer to the location on the screen where we want to actually place our HUD element. I can also organize these on the programming screen in a way that helps me kind of remember their positions. Our next box is going to be on the left so we're going to have it set to a connection point of X positive X negative and the dimensions are 1.4, 0.6, and 4.8 on the Z axis. And you can play around with the visibility while you're building the system out so that you can see exactly where you want things to go. So I think that's a good place for it. I now want to attach something to the front of that so that it displays properly on the top left of the screen like it does in Sonic games. I'll set that to invisible now and we'll bring over our number object that displays the number of rings that we currently have collected. We'll go into the number object settings and we'll set it to Z negative, Z positive so that it sits in front of that block that we last left visible. Also change the dimensions to 0.6 all around and we'll leave the direction as Z negative so that it faces the camera. Now one way to make the number appear to float in a number object is to set it to invisible and add an empty texture. So now we have the number of coins or collectibles on the top left of our screen and that's looking a little barren so what I want to do is add a ring icon so that we know that what the number is keeping track of is the current number of rings. I'll pull over a copy of the ring texture and we'll create a box object to maintain its position in the world. I'll set it to a size of 0.4 all around and we'll give it a connection point of x positive x negative so that it sits on the left of the number. Now we can resize the texture of the ring down to 0.4 on the x and y so that it fits inside the square and doesn't get cut off and we'll give it a texture face of z negative so that it's in line with our number object text. Then we'll connect that to the number object and it should cleanly sit to the left of it. Now you can play around with the size of the object, the size of the number object and manipulate all of these boxes until you get something that looks right to you. I'm okay with how it is now, so I'll leave it as is. Now, as with all HUD elements in Game Builder Garage, they're gonna be a little wonky. They're gonna take up actual space in the world, so you'll see a ring shadow and you'll see shadows on the HUD, which is a little weird, but you can get used to it. So this whole HUD setup can actually be used to add more HUD elements later. So I'll be adding this over to the main code of this game and we'll comment it out so that it can go along with all of our future updates. Now we have a way to check how well the player did in our level. We can add rings in difficult to reach places or in alternate paths to see what kind of trajectory they took through our level and we can even add goals or we can impinge scores on different brackets of acquired rings. There's a lot you can do with in-level collectibles. So far we're up to 83 nodon with five of these in the game world so I'm going to try to be as sparing as possible but we still have a lot of room to go. We'll probably work on enemies next and with enemies will come the damage and health system that come along with the rings. Here's the game code so you can try it out for yourself and I'll see you in the next one.